And now I'm so happy to have you help me join, uh, join me in welcoming Kim Kardashian West to Blog Her 16. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank you We're for having me. We're excited to have you. Thank All right, you. let's dig right in. For those people who don't know everything you're up to, um, <laughs> how many different projects? I'm really private, so you know it's hard I'm for you guys try and, to really I'm know try and what I'm up to. Pull it out of you, Kim. <laughs> um, how many different projects are you involved in? What do you what do you work on? Um, what I work on on a full time job basis is filming Keeping Up with the Kardashians. That's we're filming a little bit right now. Um, <laughs> And then all of my apps. So I have a, an app called Kimoji, which is Kim Emojis. Um, and that really is a full-time job coming up, finding the artists. Today we just launched some merch. Um, and then I have a lifestyle app that takes up half of my day every single day because I, I do you know, fashion-inspired posts. Um, you know, written blogs on matters that are important to me or just, you know, sharing a lot of my behind the scenes world. So that takes up a lot of time because I'm very detail oriented. So I have to, you know, do everything from writing it to editing it, just approving every last detail. So, so reality TV and apps and in fact, the online media world where you, I know you spend a lot of time on social media, it didn't exist yeah. when, um, most of us in the room were growing up. So what did you imagine, what did you want to be when you grew up? Um, when I was about 13 years old, I looked at my best friend and the show The Real World had just come out. And so I said to her, oh my gosh, that's what I want to do. I want to be on a reality show. Wow. And you have to be my manager. And she looked at me and said, well, I said, we both have to audition for The Real World. Let's make a tape when we're 18. We'll send it into the producers, and we have to do this show called The Real World. Um, she was like, you can do it. I'm not a chance for me. I'll be your manager, huh. and you, you know, we'll make a tape for you. So it's just like such a full circle moment because she's a manager now. She's in the management business, and my show is produced by the people that did The Real World. Uh, so... What did you love so much about it? What made you say, that's me? I just thought our family life has always been interesting. It's never a dull moment. Everyone that came into our life said, oh my gosh, I can't believe you guys aren't on TV, or I can't believe your family isn't a sitcom or something, since you know reality TV wasn't so popular then. Um, so it's just... I mean, I did have a clothing store, which I still have today, Dash, that, you know, was fashion. When I was in high school, I worked at a clothing store. So if that didn't pan out, if the real world didn't pan out, then um, fashion is really what I wanted to get into. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I worked at, you know, the, the, the clothing store, and my sisters and I opened one up. And so I thought that's really where I was going to be, and that's what I was going to be doing. My sister is here, and I actually often thought that our family conversations were hilarious and, and, um, and ought to be, you know. We're all, like, really smart and political, and I thought we were all really funny, so it could have been keeping up with the camera hearts, but... Um. <laughs> so, last month, you were on the cover of Forbes, and you tweeted it by saying, I never dreamed this would happen, and I know my dad would be proud. How old were you when your dad died? And, and did you talk business with him? Did you get to an age where he could be any kind of mentor to you? Absolutely, yeah. I was 23 years old, 22, mm -hmm. just turning 23. Um, and we talked about it all the time. But I think being a little bit older now and having kids of my own, I think that watching him was the best uh, learning tool that I ever got, just seeing how he would get up every single day, be in a mate, you know, my mom would cook breakfast, he would drive us to school, we had the same family routine, he would work all day in the office, come home, we'd have our dinner. Just seeing how uh, work-driven he was, and he just was so determined, and always talking about new ideas, and always talking about these new companies he wanted to start, and, and really involving us kids all the time mm -hmm. in these types of conversations, but seeing the follow-through, seeing him be so motivated, 
you know, getting up and, and just going to work every day. Like, that to me was the best example. Mm -hmm. So it really made me realize that, you know, in my work, I love, you know, that my daughter, she always wants to watch YouTubers and a different kind of blog uh, situation. It's all about the, the kid uh, where they open up all the gifts. Do you guys, Unboxing. are there any of those bloggers here? Yeah. My daughter's obsessed, um, where she just watches the toy tutorials. So I will take my computer back when I have to do some work and she doesn't you know, really understand, so I explain to her, I need my, my work time. And um, you know, I try to teach her. I, I just see, I think seeing is the best example. So we did talk about business a lot. Um, then I went to go work for my dad when I was <laughs> after the clothing store. So when I was in college, I always worked for my dad in his office and it was more of a music company. Oh. Um, so he provided the music that you would hear in the movie theaters mm -hmm. while you were waiting for the movies to start, like in the bathrooms, concession stands, in the movie theaters. Um, so it was, you know, he was really tough on me. I had to be at work at 8.30. He was not gonna take his daughter to be, you know, just really, nothing was gonna be lenient. He really taught me, you know, to be punctual and to be responsible. So I learned a lot from him. So I know you work with your mom, you work with your sisters, obviously, so you're very family driven and I assume yeah. your mom has also been a great mentor. Did you have any mentors outside your family that, that you consider inspiring women particularly? Um, is in business, I love looking at my peers and seeing that you know young, successful women like Jessica Alba, um, you know, I spoke to her this morning and we were just, you know, picking each other's brains on something. Like I love her dedication and she's always been someone that I've looked up to um, business-wise. She's just a really smart girl. Um, I call, I like to surround myself with people that I could always call for advice. You know, my best friend who's now in the management business has now gone into, um, like product placement business and started a company on her own and it's been fascinating to see her build her brand and her business. Um, one of my other best friends, uh, two of them were in publicity for a long time, so I like to pick their brains on, you know, perception of things and, you know, I, I just, I love to surround myself with people that I can call and get good advice from all the time. I think it's really important. Yeah, the, the tribe. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think we've seen lots of celebrities go into fashion, beauty, uh, lifestyle. I don't, I don't think it's as common to go into tech and mm -hmm. apps and the emoji and all that stuff. Yeah. What was, what drove you in that direction? I know you, you now come up to, the, to my home area, the Silicon Valley, yeah, pretty frequently. What started you on that path? Um, one of my childhood friends uh, moved there and is, friends with everyone in, you know, San Francisco, and we would always just come up and have our, you know, Ben Horowitz's CEO barbecue and, you know, just hang out with our friends, and so I started to get really familiar with just a lot of fun new ideas, and, and when everyone's sitting around talking about all these great ideas, it definitely inspires you, um, and then I got approached by um, a gentleman named Niccolo from Glue Mobile, yeah. and he talked to me about doing a video game. And um, I, it was just right after I had my daughter, and I was really like reevaluating my life and figuring out what do I want to do. I felt like my brand was kind of all over the place, and I was, you know, I really wanted to tone, take it back a little bit and just figure out what do I love to do, what what I have so much fun doing, what motivates me, and when there was a game idea that um, was actually a previous game called Stardom, and it would basically, you follow this character's life into making it, you know, as a star, but they wanted to do the Kim version, and at first I was like, does anyone really wanna, you know, play a Kim game? And I asked my husband, and I was like, what do you think of this? And he was like, that is the coolest thing ever. Who wouldn't want a video game with a character of themselves? So I was like, okay, pretty cool. I could pick out the outfits. And I, we started with you know, a really small team of a few people, and now we have 
you know, a really large team and I'm so militant, like if a strap on a shoe is off, I will make the team go back and redo it. I want everything as lifelike as possible. So it connected. The game's called Kim Kardashian Hollywood and it's been really successful and I work on that, you know, full time every time there's a new, you know, event that I'm going to, haircut, outfit, anything, I send the reference in oh, and I have to change Are they going to have the... I'm thinking that we will recreate this in oh, the game. Oh, yes. nice. Awesome. Yeah. I'm getting inspired, <laughs> yeah. I'll Terrific. So I was checking out some of your Kimojis and um, some of them are hilarious. Like, I, I don't know, I laughed at all the butt emojis. <laughs> yeah. I think those are hilarious. Some of them are, out, I guess some people might think they were outrageous. A racy. And racy. And some of them are, aren't even that, that flattering. On Emoji Day, you had this thing of... And your current avatar on Twitter is yes, this funny the, face you're making, and Kanye's face was funny, and you, I think it was North yeah. making a face, and they were sort of like unflattering emoji, like yeah. us looking cranky or us looking screamy. Um, it's real life. Uh, so what's your favorite, though? Uh, I mean, I think the super iconic one to me, I just made it as my Twitter profile picture, is my cry face. I have the ugliest cry face ever. <laughs> So, and does anybody have a pretty cry face? I don't know. I'm definitely better than mine. Okay. You can't get any worse than mine. So, you just have to have a sense of humor. Kylie has a pretty funny face where she's rolling her eyes. That's not really flattering. So she she let me put that in there. Um, I have some pretty unflattering ones coming up soon of all my family members <laughs> that they don't know about. So <laughs> something to look forward <laughs> they to. They may or may not be happy with me. So. Do you think that people underestimate you? Underestimate your, how much you work on this stuff? Underestimate your intelligence? And, and my question is, is that something you push back on or something you leverage? Definitely something that doesn't bother me. Okay. Um, when someone underestimates me, I love to get to know them and have them have one conversation with me to just understand that it's, I mean, I think the easiest question to ask is what does she do? What is your talent, you know? And I jokingly said, actually to my husband the other day, I said, you know what, how, my next answer should be like sarcastically, how lucky am I? If I don't sing and I don't dance, but I'm still doing what I'm doing, how easy is my job? I don't have to do any of that. I don't have to be on stage like you working, you know, so hard, but we're still driving the same car, we're still living the same life, you know, so lucky me, you know, if it was that easy. Um, but, you know, I think it's just like the easiest thing to ask. For anyone to really assume that it's not a full-time job to have to sit and create things and come up with every single blog post and I do, you know, three a day and having to, you know, working on apps, if it's, to me it would be the same thing as people saying like anything blogging, like what do you do? You're sitting at home in your apartment and you're just on the computer. Like that is I think people such do say hard work. That, say that you know? about and, us. And mm -hmm. I, I respect it so much, yeah. you know, and they say that, you know, about the modeling world. Well, they just sit there looking pretty. It is a full-time job for, you know, models like, you know, my sister even, you know, Kendall. It's, I, I don't mind getting underestimated but I feel, I feel for people that I understand how it could bother them if they were put in the same situation. Mm -hmm. Even filming a reality show, it's a full-time job. I mean, I think that, uh, I know, you know, reality shows don't get the respect that I believe they deserve, and that's why I love being on one for so long, and I will, you know, always fight to, you know, be on as long as possible, because I love to show and prove, but, my personality is just, if you underestimate me, I would love to have a conversation with you. I would love to, I just like to prove people wrong. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times bloggers, people, those of us who blog about our lives, people think they know 100% of what goes on with us. And most of us, if you get us alone, we'll say, oh, people probably really know about 30%, right? Yeah. You know, there's so much, I, I choose what I share. So I think there's that perception of you that you share every moment and you're, you... And you, I kind of do. But what... <laughs> so what, so percentage what percent of your life do we really know? If we really were like all in and followed you everywhere and on every platform? I would probably say 85%. That's a lot. It's a lot. 
So what's the 15? Um, the 15 is... I, Share it now. Uh, <laughs> I'm definitely uh, really protective of my life with my kids. Um, you know, you might see them on the show a little bit, but not real stories about them. Not, you know, just because selfishly I feel really lucky that I get to film and I could bring my kids with me to work and they could be in the other room when I'm filming. So sometimes if they're there, when we go on a family vacation, I obviously want them there and if I'm holding them, I'm not going to say, you know, stop. I'll just say, guys, try not to, you know, film their face as much or we'll not get, you, I just, we don't make stories. Courtney and I don't have stories really around our children. They'll mm -hmm. be there, you know, but if anything, that's a benefit because we get to spend more time with them. So that is one thing that I don't, I've Snapchatted a few things. It's funny because if you don't, in this world, if you don't share something, if you didn't post it, it's like it didn't exist. So truly, I was not posting about my son because I wanted him to be able to go to the park every single day like a normal human being, and no one knows who he is, mm -hmm. and that would happen. And then I would not post him. Yeah, he's eight months old now, but people literally thought he didn't exist. They thought I had a full fake baby and I made this whole thing up and he didn't exist because I wasn't posting about him. And to me, that is so ridiculous. But I, I do get protective with them. My husband is on our show sometimes, um, but I, we do have a really private you know, relationship. I think it was, he's very private even though he's in the business and I'm very open. And so he's really taught me how to become a little bit more private and I've taught him how to be a little bit more open and it really works for us and you know so I, I definitely say that part of my home life and life with my kids I, I try to hold on to. So when I was sort of reading up on your social media presence and the, I mean you're obviously one of the most followed women in social media and people talk about how your fans, your followers, they, they feel like there's a connection there and I think most of us experience that, like blog her may be the opportunity where you're meeting in person someone that you feel like you've known forever online and that you really know them. Mm -hmm. and, and I think research shows that our online friends, we consider them our real friends. Um, but you're broadcasting to you know, millions of people and I know that sometimes you, you, res you respond directly to individuals but you're also just spending a lot of time sharing. How conscious is your effort to say, I, I, I want people to feel like they know me I want people to feel like there's a real connection. There really isn't a conscious effort to do it. I do it because, like you'll notice on the weekends, I don't really post as much or I'm not on social media because I'm with my kids. And right. if I don't have a nanny, I'm not gonna sit there and have my phone with me and, you know. Um, so I, I love my connection with my fans, I love you know, genuinely going to visit them sometimes or to hang out or invite them, you know, to LA. I love their opinion. I direct message all the time, you know, a handful of girls that I genuinely respect their opinions and I say, okay, what do you think of this, you know, Kimoji, this one or this one? And they give me their advice. Like, I love my connection to them. So mm -hmm. it's not like an effort that I feel like I have to put forth. It's I genuinely love getting to know them, um, and that's why, you know, I don't follow a lot of too many people because I really love the connection, so when I follow someone, I love to know where they live, what's their story, how many, you know, who's in their family, like I do follow them and I look up on their pages, so I, you know, never want to offend anyone, but I, I genuinely love my, you know, system of people that, that I follow and love my connection. So that connection is the positive side of social media. There's also the negative side of social media, which is the feedback that's not so kind, the feedback that's pretty harsh. Um, I, in, when, when announcing you were speaking, I talked about how I feel like you lead an unapologetic life. Like you're like, this is what I do, this is who I am, this is what I like to share. You can take it or leave it, it's free country, right? Totally. But is your private? response to some of that feedback different than the public, like unap unapologetic, doesn't affect you? What happens privately? I mean... Um, if you were to ask me this question a few years ago, I would definitely have a different answer. I used to care about all of the comments. I would go out at night, I would come home and I'd look on the computer and see what they were writing and see what mm -hmm. they were saying. 
I think as you get older, I mean, you just mature. I still don't think everyone really has a thick skin. Um, so I definitely do. I think I have such a great relationship, like me and my husband, that I feel so confident all the time that, and I think that does help, at least that helps me. I'm not saying that would help you know, someone else because you should definitely be confident on your own, and I was, but he gives me that extra push that like I have my family, I have my kids, like I don't need to sit at home and I don't have the extra time to really look at comments. Um, I do, I know that the hate's out there and I just, like when I post something, whether it's a nude selfie or something, like I don't, I don't post it trying to get a reaction. I post it because I like the photo, it could be really something simple. And so I'm not really looking at what the comments are, like, oh, what is this reaction going to be? Because I don't typically post them. Sometimes I laugh, like I can't even believe this photo is getting a reaction. Haven't they seen this a million times? Like, I don't know why there's a reaction. So I just happen to like the photo. Um, so I, I think if you do something because you genuinely like it, no matter what it is, you shouldn't look for that, you know, reaction to validate you. You can look for the reaction, you know, for fun or if you're interested, but for validation, I don't do that, so I don't really get hurt by the comments. And I do love that, you know, Instagram just added that, you know, feature where you can type in words that you want to not see in your comments. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh. they just did that, and it's so funny. I thought of this idea, like, years ago, and um, I'm really happy that they implemented it because I haven't set it up yet, but I think that I will. I wonder what words I'm going to put in there. Hmm. Well, that, that was something I was curious about because you've got the apps, you've got the emoji, you're the queen of Instagram, um, recently became the queen of Snapchat, Twitter. Um, have you thought of going from apps into developing a social platform of your own? I have, and I'm looking to add more features like that on my lifestyle app because I, you know, I don't want to be spread too thin. And I feel like that is like my hub where I can really do everything. So I would like to implement a feature where I can um, really communicate, you know, directly with the subscribers. Um, so we're working on that. So what is your response? There's a lot of conversation about oversharing in general, but particularly around your body and sexuality um, and what, what is your response, I guess, to people say, well, why do you want to share nude selfies? And why do you want to put it all out there? Because I feel good about myself. Um, <laughs> I think that, <laughs> I mean, they're definitely, at, you know, after you have a kid, now after you have two kids, there is a feeling that, I mean, I lost 70 pounds. So when you dedicate yourself, getting up every morning, thank you, um, thank you. You know, waking up at 6 in the morning, feeding one baby, running to go work out for an hour, coming back, feeding another baby, my husband, and then coming back and ha then my daughter wakes up having to feed her. You know, it's like I have three people that I have to take care of. And then, but so you can just get so caught up in not wanting to be motivated. And so I made it, you know, a really important thing for my confidence and for me to feel good. So... Have I posted a nude selfie since I've lost all my baby weight? I don't think so. So get ready. <laughs> um, so well, I mean, I have to say, for, for those of us who have some junk in our trunk, I appreciate <laughs> the JLo's and Kim Kardashians of the world for you know, being so confident and making that a part of what's awesome and beautiful. Thank you. I mean, but I don't, you know, I don't, I do what makes me feel comfortable. And I know that's my, I hope I'm not sounding, you know, like I'm being contradictive, but I just, if you're not comfortable, don't do that. Mm -hmm. And just do whatever makes you feel comfortable and whatever makes you feel good inside and happy and, you know, it, it doesn't bother me. So that's why I do it. But I don't promote other people to do it if that's not what they feel like doing. So what do you think when people debate, and they have, whether how you are or are not a role model. What do you think of that when you hear that term? Um, you know, I, I try to be. 
and I know, you know, I, tr I, I also, I don't, it's not like I sit around and I think about it too much. Like, I just do what makes me happy mm -hmm. and what I feel confident in doing. And that might not be the same thing for someone else. So my message, like, I'm not, you know, everyone always says, are you a feminist? Then why would you do this or this? And I was going to ask you that. And I don't think that I am. I think that I'm just, I don't like labels. I just think I do what makes me happy and I want women to be confident and I'm so supportive of women. I love nothing more than when all, you know, all my friends and I love to support other women. But I'm not the free the nipple type girl. If you're not comfortable with that, don't do it. You know, I know some, so I'm just more like a be, I, I'm not about the labels. Just be you, be confident within you and if you're not, then that's fine too. Just, like, no hate. That's my thing, is just be happy, spread love, no hate, no need for it. All right. But I don't like to push my things, my views on other people. Uh, so although much. millions of people are consuming your views every day, so you don't have to push, I guess, is I, I'm, com I'm comfortable sharing my views on certain issues, whether it's, you know, gun control or, even my views, like I don't really share a lot of, I share some parenting tips, but I'm not, you know, anything you do in that world, you can get criticized so much and there's no real right way, I think, to do certain things. And I just, I'm a very non-judgmental person. So my whole thing is just non-judgmentalism, if that's a thing. <laughs> So you, we'll make you, it you're, you have children now. I'm, I'm curious how it's changed you, but you just brought up gun control, and I'm curious if it's made you more political. You recently tweeted something about Black Lives Matter, obviously. You have you know, biracial children. Yeah. And is it making you more into social causes, more uh, aware, more political, more willing to speak out, having children now? Does that change, or was that something you were doing before and I just didn't see it or? I think after you have, I don't know if this is the case for any of you that have kids, but I am just terrified of everything. Like I am so paranoid, I am so, afraid. like every last thing just completely freaks me out. I'm one of these super paranoid moms that have these crazy thoughts of, you know, we only drive on one side of the road because I'm afraid if a car will flip on this, you know, if I'm too close to the center. I mean, I literally, the things you think of as a Thanks mom. Thanks for giving me something new to like, I'm, worry about. My anxiety, I've never had it, but there's something when you have two kids, you just, I don't know. So yes, I'm, I've definitely become more aware. I definitely have spoken out more as far as, definitely gun control. Um, I think you just, you know, I, I just want to be super protective of my kids. So I, I have felt that need. So something I learned just the other day, and nobody that I ran into that I asked if they knew this, knew this, was that you executive produced a documentary about mental health yes. for HLN called Red Flag. Mm -hmm. And I watched some of the trailers for it. And um, it was last year. Mm -hmm. And, well, A, I was curious about why that topic and how you got pulled into that. B, I was curious about, um, are you going to use your platform to create more documentaries? I think that's just an interesting, you obviously have a huge audience. So you could obviously make a huge difference on topics like gun control, let's say, is the one you've, you've brought up. But first, why, why that topic? Um, when I had my daughter, I was sitting in the hospital, and I was in the hospital for a, like a little over a week. I had, you know, not the nicest delivery, so I was sitting there for a while, and it seemed like the show Intervention was the only thing that was on, and I was fascinated. And um, I, you know, growing up, never really had any experience with, you know, drugs or anyone around me that had any experiences, and so as I have gotten older, I've seen it a little bit more, but I've also noticed that maybe it's been linked to mental health or maybe not mental health, and I thought, wow, this show is produced so well. So I reached out to the producers of Intervention, and I said, how would you guys want to do a show like Intervention, but for mental health issues? Because there's got to be people that, you know, are struggling and might not know that they're struggling, but everyone around them sees it, or with social media, I saw some people would have these like Twitter outbursts, 
and they didn't see, you know, I just, I felt like there's so many signs and the families wouldn't really know how to cope and in researching certain things, I realized that there weren't a lot of rehabs for mental health issues and that some regular rehabs wouldn't take patients if they had mental health issues, but sometimes they go together, so it mm -hmm. didn't really make sense. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to produce a show that would just bring awareness to that. And I love how it came out, I love how it was produced, and I love documentaries. I watch them, it's pretty much what I watch mm -hmm. all the time, so. So more on the horizon it. maybe? I, w I would hope so, yeah. So uh, this is probably my last question. Um, you have a son, you have a daughter, so you're raising a boy and you're raising a girl in really interesting times. Um, and I'm curious about what you most hope that they will, like you watched your dad and learned from your dad, what do you most hope they will watch and learn from you? And, and what do you hope that they learn from as a mistake, like no, no, what learn what not to do? Like, do you think about that? Uh, yeah. Um, I hope that they learn to understand that they really can do anything that they want to do and to always be kind. I think that, you know, you can never underestimate kindness. Um, I hope to, in as abnormal of a world that they're kind of being raised in, that they just are good people and live as normal of a life as possible. I think having such a big family and the way that, you know, Courtney and I spend a lot of time with our kids together. I think that, you know, so far I see that it's really working. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's, they're, they're young, but I think they really, um, I think they really understand that. And then I hope that, you know, that they are outspoken and I hope that they just follow their truths. Um, and for any mistakes, I hope that they see that no one is perfect, everyone makes mistakes, I've made a ton, they've been very public, and that you can just get through anything. That nothing is really, you know, as long as you surround yourself with your family and your friends and you try not to make the same mistake twice. I usually don't make the same mistake twice. I will make mistakes, but you know, as long as you just really learn from your mistakes and grow from that, that you're doing okay. And are you going to let them have, uh, when are you going to let them have social media accounts? Never. Just kidding. <laughs> um, just kidding. Um, I don't know. You know, I don't, you know, some people have like social media accounts with, from their babies, you know, from an early age, just showing off their progress. Um, I don't think I'll do that. I haven't so far. But, you know, I think they'll have to ask me and we'll have a conversation about it. I do feel like I went through that experience a little bit when Kendall and Kylie were growing up and there was no social media and then it happened and they wanted Facebook accounts and we all had to, you know, know their password and spy on them and do all of that for my mom. So I feel like I've kind of gone through it um, a little bit and now there's so much more out there. So I, I'll be overprotective um, to an extent creeping on their accounts all the time. But I do also feel like, to look at the positive, I feel like I know Kendall and Kylie so much more from watching their Snapchats, and I feel like I know their every move and what they're doing, and I also have heard stories of friends with, you know, kids that are early teenagers, like they totally catch their kids lying to them and go show up where they're at because they see them on Snapchat. So in a way, I'll look at it the positive and see I can really track their every move and I'll fully stop them. <laughs> awesome. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I had one more question and you might not really be able to answer it yet, but are you really, are you working on a show with fashion bloggers? Is that a thing that's actually happening? Beauty bloggers. Oh, beauty bloggers. Yes. Okay. Beauty bloggers. Yep. We're casting right now and um, I was on a phone call about it on the way here, adding another little prize to the... Um, to whoever wins. Cool. Trying to figure out what would be really fun and exciting. So my friend that's now the manager, she has a, a, um, a branding company. So she asked me if they could be the, uh, they represent all my hair and makeup glam teams. So she wanted to represent whoever wins. So I thought that was really cool. Oh, that is nice. Yeah. Awesome. When is, when is that happening? It uh, should be happening really soon. It's on Lifetime, so we're casting right now, 
and um, it's, they said it's going to be moving really quickly. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. You for Thank having you, everyone. Me. Thank you. Please join me in thanking him. Thank you.